So let's say we have this object and this concave mirror. What's going to happen is rays of light are going to bounce off of this object and it's going to reflect off of this mirror. And that's what mirrors do. Mirrors reflect light. And we know this object has rays of light coming off of it because we know if we were to stand right here, we would be able to see this object. Why? Because there's rays of light coming off of this object that enter into our eyes that we can process. So all objects have rays of light that come off of them, and if they run into a mirror, they will reflect off of that mirror because that's what mirrors do. So when they reflect, they're going to form some kind of image. Because again, those rays of light are going to bounce off this mirror, they're going to reflect, and they're going to converge somewhere. And where they converge, they're going to form this image. So something to get familiar with is this distance between the object and the mirror. That distance is referred to as the DO, the object distance. However, this distance between the image and the mirror this distance is referred to as the DI, the image distance. And remember, this object is a real physical object that we can touch. However, this is simply just the image. This is the image that for that's formed when those rays of light reflect and converge, forming this image. So something interesting is that this DO is related to this DI using this equation. 1 over the focal length equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. So we see this DO and this DI, they're related. And as long as we know the focal length, then if we know the DO, we can determine the DI. Or if we know the DI, we can determine the DO. So what is this focal length exactly? Well, all mirrors have focal lengths, and it's related to the 3D geometry of this mirror. Because again, this mirror has some curvature. So because it has some curvature, we could complete that to create a circle. So that circle that's created would have some kind of radius, which we call the radius of curvature. However, half of that radius of curvature, so half of that radius of curvature is the focal length. This is the all-important focal length. So we see it's simply related to the 3D geometry. It's related to the curvature that will create a circle. So, so again, that has a radius. So half of that radius is the focal length. So that focal length is really important, and you'll see it over and over again in, in these optics uh, equations. So now we know. Now we know 1 over the focal length equals 1 over the DO plus 1 over the DI. They're related using this equation. But something important to realize is we can also have a convex mirror. So we can also have a convex mirror, and it's the same idea. We have an object, so it has rays of light that are going to bounce off of this mirror, because that's what mirrors do. Mirrors reflect light. So when they reflect light, they're going to create some kind of image. Some kind of image is going to be formed. And again, it's that same idea. We have a DO and a DI. This DO is the object distance, the distance between this object and the mirror. Well, this is referred to as the DI, the distance between the image and the mirror. And remember, this is the object. This is a real physical object that we can touch, and this is simply the image that's formed. So we have this DO and DI, and again, they're related through this exact same equation. They use this exact same equation. As long as you know the focal length of this mirror, then if you know the DO, you can determine the DI. Or if you know the DI, you can determine the DO. And so again, they're related to the, through this equation. But again, what's the focal length of this mirror? Well, it's the same idea. This mirror has curvature. So because it has curvature, we can complete the circle, which has a radius of curvature. So half of that radius of curvature is the focal length, the all-important focal length. So again, the point is these focal lengths or, or simply, they're just a length. All of these DO, DI, and focal length, they're in units of length, whether it's meters or centimeters or whatever. They're all lengths. And again, so we know how they're all related using this equation. But something important to realize is these images that are formed, normally it makes sense that the images are formed on the same side as the object because we know rays of light reflect. They reflect off of mirrors. These mirrors reflect the light. So therefore, it makes sense that the image would be formed on this side. And the same thing with this mirror. We know those rays of light reflect off the mirror. So it makes sense that the, the image will be formed on the same side as the object. However, under certain situations, Sometimes the image can be formed on the opposite side, the side that doesn't make sense. Because again, it, the rays of light reflect, so therefore it makes sense for the, the image to be formed on this side. But sometimes the image can be formed on the opposite side, the side that doesn't make sense. 
And again, it, it depends on, and again, so, so it's a little complicated, but it depends where the object is and that determines where the image will be formed. But the point is the image will either be formed on the same side or the image can be formed on the opposite side. And again, so so now, but it'll either be one. It'll either be formed on the opposite side or the same side. So again, we know the image can, can be formed on different sides. But now that we know this, now let's get familiar with some conventions. So this convention that I'm gonna go over, you just need to memorize. You just need to memorize this. So whenever you have a concave mirror, and again, we know it's concave because I like to think it's like Pac-Man that's gonna eat the object, that by, will always have a positive focal length. If we know what the focal length is, it's always a positive focal length and we plug in a positive value. However, if we have a convex mirror, so again, it's it's not eating the object, it's like Pac-Man that it's not eating the object, so that's a convex mirror, which will always have a negative focal length. Then focal length will always be negative. So if we know this focal length, maybe it's one meter, then when using this equation, we'll plug in negative one meter. So that's just by definition, just things you need to be familiar with. Something else, the DO will always be positive. And again, it's a little more complex, but generally speaking, the DO will always be a positive value. So you don't need to worry about that. However, with these DIs, if the DI is on the side that makes sense, and again, we know it makes sense that these rays of light are going to reflect off the mirror, so the image should be made on this side. So if, it, if the image is on the side that makes sense, it's a positive DI. So again, and, and it, with mirrors, it means that the image is on the same side as the object. However, if the image is formed on the opposite side, the side that doesn't make sense because we know these rays of light reflect. So if the image is formed on the opposite side, the, the side that doesn't make sense, it's a negative DI by definition. So when using this equation, you whatever length this is, you would plug in the net. For example, if this was three meters, you would plug in negative three meters. And the same thing with convex mirrors. Again, the the if the rays of light reflect, so the image should be formed on this side. So when it when the image is formed on this side, it's a positive DI, the side that makes sense. However, if the image is formed on the opposite side, it's a negative DI. And again, the side that doesn't make sense. So now that's everything we need to know about mirrors. So now let's talk about lenses. So lenses are different. For example, maybe we have these glass lenses. They're a little different. So again, we know with mirrors, those rays of light reflect off the mirror. So, so that, that's what mirrors do, they reflect light. However, with lenses, those rays of light go through the lens. They go through the lens for both of these types of lenses. And we know this, this makes sense. For example, if we're standing here and we have this lens, and again, we know we see lenses with microscopes or, or we see lenses in lots of different contexts, we can see this object. Because again, those rays of light go through the lens into our eyes. So, so again, that's the difference between, between lenses and mirrors. Mirrors, the rays of light reflect. With lenses, the rays of light refract in the lens and then, and then they go through. So now that we know this, let, let's again go back into some examples. So again, we know we have an object. Those rays of light are going to go through the lens and then they're going to converge and they're going to form some kind of image. The same thing with, with both of these types of lenses. So again, the rays of light go through the lens and then they converge forming an image. So again, we have the same, the same kind of ideas. This distance between this object and the lens is referred to as the DO. However, this distance between the image that's formed and the lens is the DI, the image distance. And again, this is the real physical object that we can touch. Well, this is just an image that's formed where all those rays of light converge. So again, it's that same idea. We can relate the DO to the DI using this equation. So as long as you know the focal length of these lenses, you can use this equation to relate DO and DI. So how do we determine the focal length of these lenses? All lenses have a focal length. How do we determine that? Well, it's the exact same idea. These lenses have curvature. So because they have curvature, you can complete those circles. Then those circles will have some kind of radius. So half of that radius is the focal length. So again, both of these lenses will have some kind of focal length. Because again, because they, they have they have curvature. So, so they'll make a circle with the radius. So half of that radius is the focal length. So now we know they both have a focal length. And if we know those focal lengths, we can relate the DO and the DI using this equation. So now that we know this, again, it's that same idea. The, the rays of light normally go through the lens, converging, forming an image. But in certain situations, the image can be formed on the same side as the object, the side that doesn't make sense. So again, it's that same idea with, with, so with both of these kinds of lenses.
So now that we know this, again, let's get familiar with some convention. These convex lenses, also referred to as converging lenses, have positive focal lengths. So whenever you have a convex lens, it will always have a positive focal length. While these concave lenses, these diverging lenses, will always have negative focal lengths. And this you just simply have to memorize. These DOs are always positive. DO is always positive. However, the DI is the same idea. If the DI is on the side that makes sense, because we know these rays of light converge on the opposite side. So if the, if the object is on the opposite side, that's a positive DI. It's positive. It makes sense. So, 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 I, it, it, so that's how I like to think about it. However, if the image that's formed is on the side that doesn't make sense, it's a negative DI. So with, with lenses, if the image is formed on the same side as the object, this would be a negative DI. And again, I like to think of it as the negative DI because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that rays of light will converge here making an image. So again, if the image is formed on the opposite side, the side that makes sense, this would be a positive DI that you plug into this formula. However, the image that formed is on the side that doesn't make sense on the same side as the object, this length is the negative di. So if this length was maybe two meters, you would plug in negative two meters. So again, it's that same idea. So, so these are just some conventions you need to be familiar with. So now that we know this, let's go into more detail. So let's say we have this mirror. We're back to mirrors. We know what's going to happen. Those rays of light reflect off this mirror, converging, forming some kind of image. And again, we explained the do and the di. The distance between the object and the mirror is the DO, and this distance between the image that's formed in the mirror is the DI. But we can also focus on the heights. So again, this is an object. This is a tree. It's a real physical object that will have some kind of height. So this height of this object is the HO, the object height. However, this image that's formed also will have some kind of height. So this height of the image is the HI, the image height, the, the height of the image. And not just that, these are actually related. This DI and DO is related to this HO and HI using this equation. If you know the DI and you divide it by the DO, that will equal this HI divided by this HO. So we have this equation relating these heights and these, these distances. And again, it's due to the, three, the geometry of how these rays of light converge. So, so it's a little complex, but the point is we have this relationship between these HOs and HIs, and these, these uh, ra ratios will always equal each other. And not just that, both of these will always equal the magnification of the image. So again, they both equal the magnification of the image, but normally you'll see it in the context of HI over HO equals the magnification. And not just that, also, when using this equation, if you have the di, you have to flip the sign, and that's why it says negative di, so, so you have to flip the sign when using this equation to, to get the right magnification. So now that we know this, let, let, let's go over some examples. So, so again, let's say, let's say this object is two meters tall. So, so this object, this tree was two meters tall, and let's say it created an image that was one meter tall. So the image was one meter tall. This would have a magnification of 0 0.5 because, again, we know the height of the image is 1 meter. The height of the object is 2 meters. We plug it in the formula and we get a magnification of 0 0.5. And just rule of thumb, when the magnification is less than 1, the image is demagnified, which makes sense. The image, the, the, the image is smaller than the object. So this image was demagnified. However, what if, what if we have this situation? So we have an object, original object that's two meters tall, while the image is four meters tall. What's the magnification? Well, again, we just plug in our values. The HI was four meters. The HO, the height of the object, was two meters. We plug it in, we get a magnification of two. So whenever we have a magnification larger than one, the object was magnified. And we see this. We see this image was magnified. It's larger than the object. And we can see this just, just based on the way this ratio works. If the height of the image is larger than the height of the original object, we'll have a ratio larger than one and we'll have a magnification. So, so that makes perfect sense. So again, if the magnification is larger than one, which essentially means that the height of the image is larger than the height of the object, then we have a magnification. And not just that, we can also have negative magnification. So again, this with a positive four meters and a positive two meters, We'll, 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 we'll plug those in and we'll have a positive magnification. However, if for somehow, for some reason, we have a negative magnification, all that means is that the image was inverted. So again, if the object was pointing in this direction, if we had a negative magnification, the, the image that formed would be inverted. It would be upside down.
So if you have a negative magnification, the image has been inverted. If you have a positive magnification, the image will point in the same direction as the original object. And these are just some things you need to be familiar with. So in the next video, I have a link of it below. I'll go over some really neat tricks to solve these, these mirror and lens problems.